We're doing fine on the road, living in Mexico. Let's talk about SAC, surface air consumption, and RMV, respiratory minute volume. What's the difference and how to calculate them? Vamanos. I've seen a lot of confusing videos on this subject, so I'm gonna try and make this really simple and clear, hopefully. The confusion with this topic tends to come down to SAC, surface air consumption. You'll hear recreational divers talking about SAC and they're usually calculating it in bar or PSI per minute. Let's talk about why this could be okay for some divers in certain circumstances, but that it's not a completely accurate unit of measurement and cannot be used by technical divers calculating their gas needs. When calculating SAC as bar or PSI per minute, it, you're not considering the size of the cylinder. That means you can't compare sack rates across all cylinder sizes, meaning you can't compare that number with buddies who dive on different tanks. And with that, can we just get away from the comparison game anyway? Having the lowest sack rate doesn't mean you're the best diver. Sure, air consumption goes down with increased skill and comfort in the water, but different physiology means different gas needs. That's it. Anyway, for recreational purposes, using your own tanks or always renting the same size tanks, you can calculate your sack in this pressure per minute kind of way and use it to track changes in your air consumption based on your skill development, your fitness, water conditions, task loading, etc. I like to think of this as a sort of rough and ready air consumption calculation in units that are easier for our minds to conceptualize. The equation for SAC in pressure per minute is very simple. Remember, when we're doing calculations that involve absolute pressure, you need to calculate them correctly. So know whether you're in salt water or fresh water and use the correct conversion units to find your absolute pressure. I'll talk about how to do a gas run test a little bit later in the video, but basically you just take your starting pressure, subtract your ending pressure, divide by absolute pressure at your depth, and finally divide it by the length of the test. For example, say you go out and you use 40 bar while swimming at 15 meters for 10 minutes in salt water. You've already done the first part, so you've subtracted the starting pressure minus the ending pressure. That's what that 40 bar is. Then the absolute pressure at 15 meters in salt water would be 2.5. You plug all of that into the equation and you get 1.6 bar per minute at the surface. Now remember, this is cylinder dependent. You cannot just take that and willy nilly compare it to any cylinder. So now we come to another part of the confusion for these terms. In technical diving, many divers use SAC and RMV interchangeably, but only when SAC is calculated as a volume per minute measurement. Used in this way, and this is the more accurate, appropriate unit, your unit should be liters or cubic feet per minute. Remember, your air consumption is going to go up as you go deeper. So once you find your SAC, your surface air consumption, whether that's in pressure per minute or volume per minute, you can take that and adjust it for the depth at which you're going to dive and find out how much you will consume at that depth. You do that by multiplying by the absolute pressure at that depth. But again, when you're talking to a recreational diver and you tell them your liters per minute, like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense for them, right? Like you have your SPG and you can understand understand PSI and bar. You know what I mean? So I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. Please let me know in the comments if that's the experience that you've had with it, but that's that's what I've seen. Let's just dive into what respiratory minute volume is. RMV is the volume of gas that moves through the lungs during one minute. In the medical community, RMV is calculated differently and more accurately, and it's used for different respiratory treatments. For simplicity's sake, we're going to use RMV to signify the volume per minute unit of measurement that we're going to calculate. It's important for technical divers to use the volume per minute unit because that's what they use to calculate their gas needs throughout 
their entire dive, including all of the different blends that they're going to take in different sized cylinders. So this has to be as accurate as humanly possible. So how do we figure it out? We're going to have to do gas consumption runs. I don't recommend that you just try to calculate this off of like a recreational dive that you did. You should go out with the intention of doing a gas consumption run. This should give you the most accurate numbers. And that's really what we're going for here. These gas consumption runs are very simple. All you need to do is wear your desired dive gear, right? The same configuration, accessories, weight, all of that, that you would normally go diving with, because it doesn't make sense to do a gas consumption run in something that you're not going to be diving in. I don't know, but just, I had to say that. With that, you need to make sure that you have an SPG, a depth gauge, and a timing device, which also should be part of your normal gear, but just putting that out there. You'll want to pick a dive spot where you can maintain the same depth for at least 10 minutes and even more is better. Take note of the depth where you're doing the test and the amount of time that you choose to run it. You'll want to do a few different tests and it's best to do these multiple times and take an average because that will give you a more accurate number. Ideally, you want to find your resting RMV, which would be the number you use for your decompression or safety stops. Then you'll want another one where you're swimming at a normal pace. And then the last one, which I think is useful to know and hopefully will not come into play very often, but that's, you know, exerting yourself. So swimming and breathing heavily. This would simulate swimming against a current, for example. For each of these tests, you want to take your starting pressure at the beginning of your timed session and your ending pressure. Now we're getting into the calculations. Yay! <laughs> we're going to start with metric. So to find your RMV in liters per minute, you'll take the bar used during your gas consumption run test and multiply that by the total cylinder capacity in liters. You'll divide that by the absolute pressure and then divide the whole thing by the time of your gas consumption run test. And that will give you liters per minute. Let's do an example. Say you use 50 bar in your gas consumption run and you're diving on a single tank with a 12 liter capacity. You swim at 15 meters for 15 minutes in fresh water. We'll take these numbers and plug it into the equation. 50 bar times 12 liters. Divide that by 2.46, which is the absolute pressure in fresh water at 15 meters, and divide that whole thing by 15 minutes. That will give you 16.2 liters per minute. Imperial is more complicated. We expected that. We're going to get through it. The beginning is where it's a little bit different. So you take that PSI used, divide that by the working pressure of the tank, and then multiply that by the total tank capacity. Then the rest of it is the same. Say you use 450 PSI with twin 71 cubic feet tanks. That means you have 142 cubic feet total capacity, working pressure at 2,475 PSI. You do this while swimming at 40 feet for 15 minutes in salt water. Plug all of that into the equation. You divide 450 by 2,475 multiply that by 142, then divide all of that by your absolute pressure and take the whole thing and divide it by the minutes of your test. Do all of that math and you'll come out to 0.78 cubic feet per minute. Okay, sweet, cool. Again, these numbers are essential for technical divers, but even in the tech world, RMV is used a little bit differently depending on the type of diving you're doing. With open circuit technical divers, this calculation is used to determine gas needs to complete the dive. Okay, so we get volumes of whatever blends we need. Closed circuit rebreather divers, on the other hand, they use this calculation to predict scrubber canister lifespan, meaning the more gas that goes through the scrubber, the quicker the scrubber will need to be changed. Just a little fun fact for you, you know? Maybe rebreathers are in your future somewhere. You never know, you might have $10,000 laying around someday. Yeah. Strategies to improve air consumption. Dive more, okay? Improve your skills 
in your configuration. That's going to be key. You'll also want to streamline your gear and be properly weighted. And finally, minimize your movements. Be a lazy diver. It's the best. Are you still confused? If you are, leave me your questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. There are no dumb questions here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, all of those things because that helps me in this world. Uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed because that's the best. And uh, if you really want to support what I do here and the teachings that I provide, you can join my community on Patreon. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, love you, bye. Oops, that's not what I want. Uh... We're doing this now, now that I'm sweating. Cool. When calculating sack as bar bleh.